Good morning, Everbound family, and any that might be listening. Um, it's Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word, and uh, we're in the book of Revelations. We're down to chapter 4. Uh, we're starting the third division of the book. If you go back to 119, Jesus told Peter, to, uh, told John to write what he had seen. That's chapter 1. Write the things that are. That's chapter 2 and 3, the church age. And then write the things which shall be hereafter. It's interesting when we go into forward, John will be taken up to heaven and will be told to write the things which are hereafter. In other words, everything that happens in chapter 4 through 22 is that which will happen hereafter. Hereafter what? Hereafter the church age is over. And um, so let's look at it. After this, after what? After chapter 2 and 3, which deals with the uh, seven letters to the seven churches, representing church history down through the ages. After the church age, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a thunder. We go back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. When John saw Christ on the Isle of Patmos there, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, before he turned and saw him, he heard a voice behind him as a voice of thunder. So uh, this one who is calling to him to tell him to come up hither is none other than Christ. And so a door is going to be open in heaven, and John, who is a type of the rapture of the church, is going to be taken up. Now, John's experience here is somewhat like Paul's experience in the um, Second Corinthians chapter 12, um, a couple of uh, exceptions. Um, number one, Paul was uh, said that he seen, he heard things that were not um, possible for man to hear. On the other hand, John was told to write, to describe what he has seen and, and what he will see and what he's heard and and the things that are hereafter. So it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Now notice this, a very key verse, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. You see, we're entering into the third division of the book. John was told to write the things you saw, chapter 1, write the things which are the church age, and then to write the things which shall be hereafter. He says here in chapter 4, I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Uh, notice that um, three things here. Um, that um, John sees that correlates with what Paul says in Thessalonians and also in Corinthians. Uh, number one is um, there is the uh, uh, sound of his voice, a voice said to me. Uh, in um, uh, chapter uh, 4 of 1 Thessalonians, verse 16, uh, Jesus said, that which the Lord has shown unto me. Now then, uh, secondly, is the trumpet. They're going to have, uh, John is going to, uh, or the saints are going to hear a trumpet. And the third thing is uh, that they're going to have on a uh, white remnant. He says, and immediately I, I was in the spirit and behold, a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the third thing is the uh, spiritual change. I'm, um, Getting ahead of myself there, uh, uh, the spiritual change. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter um, 15, verse 52. Paul said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all change. John is going to change momentarily from his earthly body into a spiritual realm. Now, uh, like Paul, whether he is taken up in body or in spirit, uh, we're not told. Um, uh, Paul said he didn't know, uh, but um, anyway, and immediately I um, 
was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardis stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in uh, sight like unto an emerald. Uh, the jasper, the sardis stone here uh, is like a diamond. It's crystal clear. If you go over and you read in Revelation chapter 21, John will describe it there. And it says as, as crystal clear clear and um, then uh, here um, uh, the rainbow is a uh, emerald color uh, that's a green and um, uh, color there uh, Dr. Rogers says that uh, the green there is symbolic of life we think of when spring comes life comes back the grass turns green the trees turn green etc and he that uh, was set up on the throne was to look like, okay, we read that, and uh, there was a rainbow. We first uh, um, meet the rainbow back in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, clear back in Genesis chapter 9. Uh, the rainbow was a covenant that God made with Noah that he would not destroy the earth again with water. And uh, uh, when uh, during the tribulation period, God is not going to destroy the earth but he is going to um, destroy the ungodly that are on the earth. And um, um, then we'll enter into the millennium when everything will be in a perfect state there with Christ reigning on the throne uh, for a thousand years. Now at the end of the thousand years, uh, another indication of the fact that uh, um, the rapture uh, that there is a rapture and a revelation in the uh, rapture at the end of the seven year period Christ is going to reign for a thousand years if you go to Revelation 26 times in uh, five verses there it uses the term a thousand years uh, which is a thousand is a millennium that's where you get the word millennium from and um, uh, in the Revelation uh, at the end, well, I'm sorry, not in the Revelation, um, for it will take place seven years, but at the end of the thousand years, um, Peter speaks up there, he said, but the day of the Lord is coming um, when the heavens will pass away with great noise, the earth also and the elements therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things should be dissolved. And uh, John said he saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down for the first earth and the first heaven were passed away. But uh, when the God destroys the earth again at the end of the millennium, then um, it will be not with water, but with fire. Verse 4 says, um, And round about the throne were four and twenty elders. Um, seats, uh, thrones were four and twenty uh, seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white remnant, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, who are these 24 elders? As I said um, uh, previously, that uh, some believe that they are the church. And I said, I disagree. I'm, I'm glad one of my favorite uh, is uh, Clarence Larkin, who would agree with us. Um, the uh, uh, 24, uh, if you go back to the book of Chronicles, when uh, Solomon is getting ready to build the temple, David is preparing everything. And David is going to count the elders there in Israel. There's 24 of them. And so David is going to divide these 24 elders up. And each one of these 24 elders and their descendants will uh, serve in the temple for a period of time. And uh, then they will come out, and the next will go in. 
uh, this was still in progress in the days of John the Baptist for uh, Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, was of the tribe of Abiah, or the um, group of Abiah, I believe it was, and um, was serving in the temple his period of time. And when his period of time was up, he came out. And um, and uh, so um, he says that around. And anyway, these 24 elders in the Old Testament um, are resurrected singly. Uh, right after Christ's resurrection, if you go back to Matthew chapter 27, verse 52, it says, And there was a great earthquake, and the graves were open, and many came out of the grave and went into the holy city after Christ's resurrection. And um, uh, we get a hint who these 24 elders are in the 21st chapter of uh, the book of Revelation. I believe it's uh, about verses 10 through 14 there. But John tells us that the new heavenly city that comes down out of heaven is going to have 12 gates, and the names on the gates will be the 12 tribes of the of the of Israel, and it will have 12 foundations, and the names on the, each foundation is one of the apostles, and so um, the 24 elders represents the um, the um, Old Testament saints as well as the New Testament saints. Now, Larkin goes ahead and say that while the 24 elders represents the Old and New Testament saints, that these Old Testament saints are not a part of the church, for only the New Testament saints are a part of the church. And um, I'll leave that uh, to him much wiser than I am. But certainly, they're already in heaven, as is the church prior to the beginning of the of the tribulation period, which won't start till chapter 6. And he found about the throne, 24 elders. Okay, verse 5. By the way, uh, and there's only 24 seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, their clothed in white remnant, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now these could not be angels, for angels are never spoken of either as sitting or as having crowns. Um, they cannot be anyone else other than uh, who John says they are uh, there in Revelation 21. And uh, they represent the Old Testament saints, they represent the New Testament saints, the Old Testament through the twelve tribes, the New Testament through the twelve apostles. And um, they will be clothed in a white remnant. We go to Revelation chapter 19 at the wedding supper of the Lamb. The um, um, uh, bride is clothed in a white remnant, which is the righteousness of the saints. Now, what is the righteousness of the saints? It is that righteousness that is imputed unto us uh, by Christ. It is Christ's righteousness. And uh, then uh, the crowns, uh, the Bible speaks of a number of, of crowns. I think there's about five of them in all uh, there that uh, Paul speaks of. Uh, there's the crown of, uh, of, of righteousness. There's the, um, well, um, I wouldn't uh, be able just at the moment to name all five of them, but there's five crowns mentioned in the New Testament uh, that the saints can earn. The soul winner's crown, the pastor's crown, the uh, crown of righteousness, uh, uh, and uh, so forth. Um, Verse 5 says, And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I think there's two important things here in verse 5. First of all, this is not the throne of grace. Grace is over. When the church is taken out, grace is over. A picture of this is when Noah entered the ark, grace the door was shut. Grace was over. When Solomon, when Lot was taken out of Sodom, grace was over. And um, when Moses gave the law in the Old Testament there, uh, God came down on the mountain and there was lightning and thundering and smoke. Uh, and uh, so this is a picture of Old Testament judgment that is going to fall upon uh, the remnant of Israel, the, uh, of Israel, 
and the ungodly who comes down against Israel who encamps around Jerusalem. Secondly, notice, um, and, uh, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, who are the seven spirits of God? We've already uh, found out before the seven spirits of God. Seven represents completeness, just like the seven churches represented all of the churches down through the ages. The sevenfold spirit represents uh, the sevenfold uh, ministries of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can read about them, I believe it's in Isaiah chapter 11. Uh, but uh, notice here that the Holy Spirit is taken out. Now then, turn with me, if you're following me, uh, to Thessalonians chapter 2. And notice in uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand, that no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Certainly we're in that day. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of petition. Now then, a lot of people want to take this and say, okay, the Son of Man hasn't been revealed yet, or the, the, the Son of the, the Antichrist has not been revealed yet, so it can't be. Well, read further. Sometimes we stop reading too quickly. Let's go on down. Okay, let me read verse 4, 3 again. That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of petition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now then, pay close attention. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Notice the, uh, the uh, uh, Holy Spirit lives in the heart of the believer. When the church is taken out, the Holy Spirit is taken out. When the Holy Spirit is taken out, uh, the um, church is taken out. And the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the Holy Spirit is taken out. Notice again there in verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only who now let us, that's the Holy Spirit, will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, and then, not until he's taken out, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the um, um, spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. My friends, sometimes uh, we, we get incorrect doctrine because we... Uh, we grab a, what we think is a truth, and we don't read further enough to find out what it is, uh, what, uh, what all the Bible has to say about the subject. Okay, now then, verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about uh, the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. At this point, the, th the throne is empty, but when we get to chapter 15, uh, it will be full of the tribulation saints, those who get saved after the church is raptured out. Uh, but the only way they can be saved is by refusing the uh, mark of the beast and consequently being either starved to death because they can't buy or sell or being beheaded um, by the uh, Antichrist and his emissaries. Uh, but um, uh, 
uh, the sea of glass, if you go back to the Old Testament again, and this is where we can say that almost everything used as symbolic in Revelation between 4 and 19 comes out of the Old Testament um, tabernacle there. In the Old Testament tabernacle, uh, before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Now, what it was, it wasn't a sea of glass in the sense that it was glass. It was a lava there where the people, the priests, when they came in to do the work, they would first wash their hands. Uh, they would cleanse themselves. And um, uh, here, uh, Dr. David Jeremiah points out that the sea of glass here is uh, uh, symbolic of the fact that uh, we have been cleansed, uh, and um, therefore, uh, verse 7 says, And the first beast was like um, um, a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Uh, one commentator, I want to say that it was uh, um, Dr. Dobbs, uh, but it may have been uh, um uh, Agent Rogers, but they point out here that uh, in these four you have all of creation there. Uh, uh, you have the strength of the lion, the intellect of the man, the humility of the lamb, and uh, then um, the uh, swiftness of the eagle there. And so the four beasts, now this word beast um, has two different words. And what it means here, that the word here is not the same word that is used over in 13 uh, uh, through, uh, or 17 through 19. Here the word is zoon, and um, it uh, simply means a living creature, while as the one over in um, uh, later speaking of the Antichrist, the beast, it, in other word, there is theon, which means a wild, vicious beast. Um, and it seems that the purpose of these, if we go back to Ezekiel chapter 1, and I believe it's chapter 4, Ezekiel gets a vision of the uh, uh, of heaven, and he sees the same uh, uh, four living creatures there. And um, uh, they seem to be guardians of the throne, and I have to admit, I don't understand why God's uh, throne would need a guardian. Uh, but we, as we read on further, we will see that they were more than guardians of the throne. Uh, they were also servants of the throne. It is they who will uh, hand out the seals and so forth, uh, and so they will carry on God's operation. Verse 8 says, And the four beasts had each of them, and how far? Oh, mercy, I'm at 23 minutes. Uh, let me just stop here at verse 7, and we'll pick up. I hate to. Well, let me, we've only got, I'll, I'll go fast. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes, meaning intellect, and so forth. And uh, they uh, uh, rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and praise, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Paul says the same thing about Christ uh, in Colossians chapter 1, that he created all things uh, for his pleasure and that in him all things consist. Uh, this is chapter 4. Uh, there's much more that could be said about it. But anyway, um, I apologize taking so long. And um, uh, this is Pastor Larry with a moment in the word. Uh, we'll look at chapter 5 tomorrow. And uh, you have a blessed and wonderful day. By the way, if I hadn't said it, this is uh, uh, Thursday, and of course it's February the 11th, 2021. Go forth today, bless someone. It'll bless you, it'll bless them, it'll bless God, and God then will bless you as well.